among the canonized founders and foundresses of religious orders represented in St. Peter's Basilica, one can see since 1925 a large statue of St. Madeleine Sophie Barra, 1779 to 1865, who, in 1800, founded the Society of the Sacred Heart, apostle of the devotion to the Sacred Heart, and renowned educator. On the banks of the tranquil river Yun, in the little town of Joigny, the days pass by peacefully. History recounts that St. Vincent de Paul lived here for a while as tutor to the young Prince Gondi. On the hill of Saint-Jacques, the father of the Barra family cultivates his vineyard. In the wine cellar below his house, the barrel maker fashions his barrels. His wife takes charge of the education of their two adolescent children. The birth of another child is expected when a fierce fire ravages the area. Down the little street, running under the house, the flames penetrate through the chimney into the room where Madame Barra is resting. She is so terrified that she gives birth prematurely to a little girl during the night of the 12th of December, 1779. The very same day, the baby is baptized in the church of St. Thibault. During the catechism class, her thin little voice is heard. It was the fire that brought me into the world. It is her brother, also her godfather, ten years older than herself, who is a seminarian, who takes her education in hand. Louis is a very gifted teacher of maths and science in the College of Joigny. He does not spare his young sister, introducing her to every sector of the sciences, whether religious, literary or secular. Everything is matter for teaching. Even the joys of the wine harvesting are forbidden to the little Burgundian. In her tiny room, she works away without a break, preparing herself for life which will be totally given, the details of which the Lord has not yet revealed to her. But the rumblings of the revolution are to be heard. In Paris, Louis Barra, now a deacon, has to go into hiding in order to save his life because of having retracted his oath of allegiance to the Constitution. From Paris, he sends a picture of the Sacred Heart to his mother. Joigny is a bastion of Jansenism, but Madame Barra resists the pressure of the family and installs the picture in the family living room. Each evening, the family prays that Louis, who has been thrown into prison, may escape the guillotine. This tenderness of the heart of Jesus is a discovery and a powerful stimulus for the adolescent Sophie. The storm comes. Louis, freed and ordained priest in secret, brings his little sister to Paris to pursue her studies. From Paris, Sophie, a good needy woman, does embroidery to earn a living and sends home to her mother a piece of embroidery depicting the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary based on scripture, theology, tradition, and her own mystical elan. A prolonged contemplation of this embroidery helps us to discover the richness of the various symbols. The heart of Jesus pierced by the lance, the heart of Mary, pierced by the sword of sorrow. The pelican giving of its substance to feed her little ones. 
the serpent and the apple, the lily of purity and the rose of charity, the hyssop and the vinegar. In the midst of this life, so filled with prayer, study, manual work and teaching catechism, Sophie prepares her consecration. O oh Jesus, my most sweet life, please let us make a pact together. May I die so completely to myself that you alone may live in me. May I keep such a complete silence that you alone may speak to my heart. May I rest so completely in you that you alone may be at work in my heart. According to your good pleasure. Amen. With three companions who will not persevere, Sophie consecrates herself to God and his service before this picture on the 21st of November, 1800. The date celebrated by the Society for its foundation. It is this same picture which has presided over the election of the 13 superiors general who have succeeded Madeleine Sophie Barra to our day. Eighteen hundred and two. In the modest beginnings of the work of education at Amiens, Sophie finds her delight in the Canticle of Canticles. Come then, my love, my lovely one, come. For see, winter is past, the rains are over and gone. The fig tree is for forming its first figs, and the blossoming vines give out their fragrance. Come then, my love, my beautiful one, come. My dove, hiding in the clefts of the rock, show me your face. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is beautiful. My beloved is mine, and I am his. The fire is spreading here and there. 1804 in Grenoble. Rose Philippine Duchesne, who merits her name, Oak a former visitation nun, brings to the society far more than her monastery, her strong personality and her heroic generosity. She is the one who will carry out the desire of her friend Sophie to make the gospel and the all-embracing love of our God known across the seas. After a delay of 12 years, finally, Philippine receives the yes for her mission. Rose Philippine and three companions embark on board the Rebecca and the epic of the Society of the Sacred Heart in the New World begins. While the fire is spreading overseas, Sophie Barra multiplies foundations. Sometimes there are communities dispersed by the revolution who gather together again and join the Society of the Sacred Heart to live in union with the heart of Jesus through prayer and apostolic work. There are also some pious educators who want to assure that their schools are based on solid virtues. Above all, there are the young women who find their vocation here. Frequent journeys are necessary, uncomfortable, and at the whim of the coach drivers, which stops at Spanish inns, where the holy monk, as some call Sophie, interests herself in the professional and spiritual life of the employees. The reasons for these journeys, in addition to the foundations, are business matters, political upheavals and revolutions, 
which threaten or expel her communities. Also tensions with the Gallican bishops and the Vatican diplomats. Foundations continue to multiply. The constitutions written in 1815 received the approval of Pope Leo XII in 1826. Pope Gregory XVI renews this approval in 1843. The end of this society is to glorify the Sacred Heart of Jesus by the imitation of its virtues and consecrating oneself to the sanctification of the neighbor. The spirit of this society is essentially based on prayer and the interior life. Side by side with these fundamental statements of the society, the constitutions contain instructions with their own flavor. They will love and desire that simplicity which flows from the calmness of a soul who seeks and longs for nothing but her God, and who, without any thought of self or of her self-interest, looks only to God, whom alone she wishes to love and please in all things. In Belgium, in 1836, the first free school was founded at Jet followed by the boarding school. And Sophie's life, given to God, is maintained between these two poles, her prayer and her love for children. In the chapel of Jet, built in 1934, two little pictures recall this. Prayer, prolonged and constant, in the midst of boundless activity and love of children. In the garden of the mother house, in the last years of her life, she rejoices at being able to open their hearts to the love of Jesus. Throughout her life, an incredible correspondence keeps her in constant contact with so many people. The 14,000 letters in the archives are addressed to her daughters, to ecclesiastical dignitaries, to friends and benefactors, to her family, whom she supports in all kinds of ways. You have had the Holy Spirit for Master. You have only to live out of his lessons with complete docility and abandonment. I have nothing further to add, my dear daughter, to the inspirations which have helped you to discover the secrets of the journey which lead certainly to the love and possession of Jesus, begun already in this life. Your mother, Bella. More than once, her daughters tried to paint her portrait or to photograph her, but in vain. She always refused energetically. It is not my face that you should reproduce. It is my love for you all that should be photographed. Then you would have something worthwhile. Some portraits were however made without any posing, from memory, with more or less success. This one, found recently in Rome by an unknown author, is particularly lively. Her contemporaries recognize her in the portrait realized by Sardinia Petit after her death. The painter had met her during her life and had collected some information about her character and her virtue. One finds in it the strength that the saint drew from her lord. Her left hand rests on the constitutions with her right hand, she seems to be pointing to the motto which she wished to be engraved on the profession cross. Corum et anima una in corde Jesu. On Thursday, we are going to heaven, Mother Barra said 
three days before the ascension. In the evening, an attack reduced her to silence. On Ascension Thursday, the 25th of May, 1865, she encounters the one she has so much loved and so loyally served all her life. At her death, she left 89 flourishing institutions and 3,539 religious living out her spirituality. In 1904, because of the expulsions from France resulting from the laws of laicization, Sophie's coffin was sent to Jet and placed in the crypt. On the eve of her beatification, the coffin was opened. Surprise! The body is intact. In 1909, after the beatification, the body is placed in the chasse. Those coming to pray are many, whether occasionally or on the first Sunday of the month, when there are often numerous groups. The canonization takes place in 1925. The prayers of the Mass highlight her humility and her charity. In 1934, a little chapel is added to the side of the Neo-Gothic chapel in Jet. Visits continue. From all horizons, groups follow one another, uniting their prayer of adoration to that of the saint. In 1998, the chasse is transferred to an immigrant area of Brussels, Rue d'Abondance. Pilgrims continue to pass from the four corners of the world. In the Basilica of the Sacred Heart in Brussels, St. Madeleine Sophie has her place among the apostles of devotion to the Sacred Heart. St. Mathilde, St. Pierre Canisius, and St. Gertrude. In August 2006, the Fraternité Monastique de Jerusalem took over the Trinità dei Monti from the religious of the Sacred Heart, who had received it from the Minims in 1828. The bell cast in 2006 reminds the people of Rome of the invitation given by St. Madeleine Sophie. Prayer must be our support and uphold our hope. On the 19th of June, 2009, on the Feast of the Sacred Heart, the chasse of St. Madeleine Sophie Barra was solemnly installed in the Church of St. François Xavier in Paris by Monsignor Ventrois, Archbishop of Paris, in the presence of more than 1,500 people from all over the world. Now, St. Madeleine Sophie rests near the former mother house of the religious of the Sacred Heart, now the Lycée du Rue, where she died. Pilgrims can easily come to this big church, which is always open to the public, to venerate her and turn to her with assurance asking her to intercede for them with the heart of Jesus. O oh Jesus, through the intercession of St. Madeleine Sophie, to your heart I confide this intention. Only look, then do what your heart decides. O oh Jesus, I count on you, I trust in you. I abandon myself to you.